Hey folks, my name is Promise, and welcome to Heroes Hour! We've seen this game a couple of times on the channel in the past, and the reason I'm bringing it back today is because I've actually been playing this game a lot of my spare time lately, and I'm having fun with it. So I wanted to share that with you guys. Now what I want to do for this video and some future videos is show off some character builds that I think are really fun to play. Either because they are busted and absolutely overpowered, or they have some sort of a silly quirk which just makes them hilarious. You'll see more of those in the future. For now, now we're going to start off with the Lament faction and a very powerful hero, Truknopal. This guy is a troglodyte who lives underground and summons the shadows, and he might just be one of the best spellcasters in the game. He's going to start off with shadow casting, which summons shadow clones of the enemy army, and that's very good by itself. But then you pair that up with Echo for some free casts over the course of a battle, plus regeneration and buffer to make sure you have plenty of mana to cast a lot. Then you get mysticism, wisdom, and sorcery. So you have extremely potent spells that you cast faster and faster and all of a sudden this guy is a one-man army that can take on forces much larger than he should be able to. So let's go ahead and turn this up to a hardcore plus difficulty and see how well we fare. And here we are. All right. Now, on Hardcore Plus difficulty, your first week is mostly going to be spent just exploring, finding some resources that are sitting around unguarded, and kind of getting a good lay of the land, hopefully finding some experience to level up your hero, maybe some free units, gold, items, anything along those lines. Also, I'd like to try finding the treasure. So we picked up the obelisk over here. I do not know where the treasure is yet, but that should become more obvious as time goes on. Nothing left over here to my west, so that's fine. Let's go back to our city. I'm going to go ahead and build up some slave pens, and actually, you know what, let me change over to the proper new uh, art mode for the cities. There we go, I think that looks kind of cool, perfect. And we will end our turn. We are up against Decay, Order, and Earthen, and the green is usually the faction that's going to come and attack you first. So, uh, yeah, early game Decay. That's a um, little scary. Those guys can absolutely mess with me pretty early, but we will... Do our best to scale beyond them. All right, with the Slave Pens, let's also pick up a Mirror Lake, which lets me get an early range unit. I'm not going to pick them up right now, but that's something we will enjoy pretty soon. I want to grab these green obelisks just because they are going to make it a lot easier to figure out where the treasure is. Most of the stuff you're seeing here is a mirage meant to throw you off, so you do usually need a little bit of help. We can go to a keep, but I don't see much value in that. The neutral hero's in the way. You can grab some sulfur. Looks like there may be a chest and some stuff that is unguarded. And we have a palace. Good. Pick this up. We get extra units, and we'll get extra defense and extra gold production. Those are good, but they are a little bit too difficult to deal with right now. Let's grab the Seed of Darkness so I can get myself the Blind Acolytes. These guys are pretty good. By the way, Acolyte is misspelled. Uh, this is pretty awesome because when they kill enemy units, they sh summon a new unit to replace them that fights on your side. So they kind of help grow your snowball a little bit. And actually, if you've never seen this game before, it's very much like Heroes of Might and Magic 3. And the point is to snowball out of control, right? The faster you can build up your snowball, the more you can preserve your snowball and disrupt the enemies with spells, that 9 times out of 10 is going to decide who is going to win the game. A uh, Ritual Circle. Okay, we can go ahead and visit that and try to capture it. That could be nice. What else do we want over here? Um, we could pick up the Slithering Cave and get ourselves some more units. I could go for a Tavern, but I don't think an early hero is going to help me much. So let's pick this up. I would like to get the Mutant Trogs. Those guys are pretty good. And usually by the end of week one, this is what you want to see. This top row filled in, ready to grab all these units this week and next week. With that, you can then start fighting and claiming stuff in your territory during week two. By the end of which, you want to start thinking about how you're going to escape. Right, and get into the neutral territory and take the fight to the other players. That is, of course, assuming you've snowballed enough, and some characters are objectively better at doing that than others. Some free spiritists? Well, I say free, they cost money, but sure, all right, we'll go ahead and take some early game units. Those are usually going to be good for us. There are hovels over here. I'll pick those up and get some trog zerkers. Okay, because I found a bunch of free units, I'm actually thinking I totally could go for some early aggression if I want to. So, knowing that's the case, let's start by picking up the infirmary so I can uh, get some resurrected units whenever we fight. Then we're going to go ahead and get as many units as I can. It turns out that's all of them. And pop them out so that we can send them to go and join my hero. Though, actually, what I want to do is fight over here. These are going to be the easiest fights for me to take on. So, maybe we will stay put. All right. Well, that could be kind of fine for us. But, yeah. Uh, okay, now I think, by the way, the treasure was close to what I thought was a church. It might be up over here. Let's take a quick look this way. 
I see some more stuff that is currently open, but alright, next turn we're going to go down here, pick up all these units and stuff like that. What else we want to do? Probably get the blood cell. This means as we start losing some uh, units, we'll start building up some power that make my range units, the Watchers or the Upgraded Nightmare version, a bit stronger for the rest of the game, which is pretty solid. Medical School will let me save even more units, or I could get more Mutant Trogs or some defense. I think I'll take the Medical School. Again, it's all about preserving your Snowball and building it up as aggressively as you can. So I'm pretty happy with this current arrangement. Do I want to go up over here? If I wanted to, can I reach? I can. Let's go ahead and dump all the units on my hero. We need to take some fights. We should be able to fight over this without too much issue. Melee units up here toward the front, range units back here where they're going to be more or less safe, and let's take a look at some of our spells. So we have shadow casting, like I said, it costs four mana, and if we click on this you can see it's going to create some copies of enemy units, and if we put these on the front line they're kind of distract each other, which can be a good way of one, breaking up your enemy range units so you don't get hit, and then also uh, buffing up your front line so they take less damage and can do more damage themselves. So we're going to lose a few units here, which is not outstanding, but okay. And then we're going to pick up probably regeneration so I can start getting some additional mana. No, we're actually going to go for shadow casting level 2. Take that all back. Let's go for the shadow casting level 2 so I can summon more of those shadows so we can actually re uh, preserve our units as much as possible. Okay, so there's not a church. It is right over here beneath the Sphinx. This is where the treasure is. Let's keep that in mind for when we come back. In the meantime, let's head back this direction. I want to get some early resources going. And it is the end of the week. Um, I could probably get things like the Center of Lament just for the extra money generation. I think that's going to be the way to go. Now, for this video and some future videos, what I'm going to do is mostly show off the early game, right? As long as it takes for me to get to the point where I am just grossly overpowered and my victory is a foregone conclusion. Because I think that it can get kind of boring for you guys if you're just watching very tedious battles where I'm going to do the same thing over and over and over again. So I'll make better use of jump cuts in the future, but for right now, I think this is going to end up being fine. Uh, let's get the upgraded Mirror Lake over here just so I'll be able to get some upgrades for my units, my range units in particular. This lets them apply confusion to enemies so they can have a chance of turning on their allies. That can be kind of nice. And as a tip, by the way, when you're going ahead and do some fights, the uh, ore quarries and the sawmills are usually going to be the weakest defending armies at the beginning. So if you need to farm out some early XP, these are going to be your primary targets. All right, let's go ahead and shadow cast right here with the zombies. That's going to distract them pretty well while I get in here and start doing a whole mess of damage, which is exactly what you're seeing right now. With any luck, we will take no losses. That's not a guarantee, but it can happen. There we go. No losses. Perfect. We get some XP. Or grab the quarry. Good. Do that again next turn with the Children of Midas. What else we want to do? Well, I probably want to pick up the monolith. The monolith is a pivotal part of this character's build. Every time we cast a spell that costs mana, we gain some spell power for the rest of the week. It resets at the beginning of the next week. But this can mean that my character can easily have 30 or 40 spell power in a week once I have enough mana to spend. And every bit of spell power increases the strength of your spell. That means more shadow clones. So many that after a couple of casts, your map is filled with shadows and the enemy is completely overwhelmed. This is going to get crazy. Trust me, I've done this a few times with this guy and it's very consistently good. Let's go ahead and fight the Children of Midas. Good thing we have a lot of small units. Their Midas touch can get very annoying very quickly, but we'll go ahead and distract a few of them. The only problem with shadow casting right now at this stage of the game is it's a little bit slow to recharge, which can be a little irritating. But it looks like we're not going to take any losses this time around. Well, I take it back, we lost one troglodyte. Ah, eh, whatever, that's not a huge deal. The good news is the sorcery skill means that as we cast spells, the cooldown gets reduced. So we cast faster and faster and faster. We don't need this right now, but later it's going to be great. Let's take that regeneration now so I can get more mana generation so I can cast more frequently, right? And now this area is taken care of. It's easy enough for us to just go over this direction. Do we have more units that I want to hire? No, and we haven't had anything saved by my infirmary so far. That feels weird. Let's take the engineering workshop so that next turn I can actually pop into the city and grab myself a first aid tent. That is another good way of resurrecting your units so that you do not take too many losses. So let's go ahead and buy that. Plus, I want to get the mimicry pod. This also creates shadow clones of your enemy, which can be hilariously good. 
Uh, I want to get... Ooh, actually, I want to get upgrades to my units. Can we do that? No, I can't afford any of those right now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and grab the tavern, and we're going to see if there's any really good heroes to hire. Well, Kaz Loki is a very good Minotaur. Shadow cloning is not the same as shadow casting. You can only use it on your own uh, units. And Dragon King. This character actually deserves a video by himself. Between things like Horde and Blood Warping Champion Dragon King, this guy can be really, really good. But we're going to worry about that another time. Let's go ahead and fight these elementals. This should be a little bit more dangerous for us um, once you get away from some of those early... Um, from some of those early quarries and stuff, but I think we're gonna be okay if I use my shadow casting really effectively. So we'll distract the crystalline entities. And then hopefully we can do an absolute ton of damage, but I can do another shadow cast to try and distract a few more. Again, we're just buffing up our front line so we take less damage as the shadows tank for us. And we're doing more damage because the shadows are really good. Now we're starting to lose a few units as my guys are getting kicked around in the air. That's a little bit weird, but okay. Lost some guys, but only little ones. I don't really care too much about them. Let's go ahead and pick up Echo. So now, as we fight, there is a chance that the spells we have already cast in battle will cast again for free, sometimes more than once. So if we're lucky, we can cast Shadow Casting like, I don't know, three or four times, and it ends up being 12 or more times over the course of a battle, giving me so many gosh dang Shadow Clones. I want to take the movement so we can go around fast. Ooh, Onyx Rods are okay, but Arcanists are even better. Let's pick those up. And some XP or a Thunderer. I think XP because I want to level quickly. We can go to the keep and turn units into one type. I'm not worried about that yet. Can we fight, let's say, the Palace? I think the answer might be yes. And I want to grab that for the extra gold income early, so let's do that now. And again, Shadow Casting is going to take, in this case, four-fifths of their army and create a clone to distract them. This is where my range units get especially good because they have a strong front line of shadows while they just do a lot of extra damage. And that's obviously really, really good. So it looks like we're going to take no losses and we're going to get a free palace for the extra money and also more unit growth at the beginning of every week. Awesome. Let's go ahead and grab Buffer next. This means I have free mana for every uh, combat. So it just kind of preserves my mana pool, means I can go into a lot of fights and I know I can do at least a few shadow casts without having to worry about anything. And I could go fighting up over here, but I may want to hold off on that. Let's try going and finding the treasure while I try to get a few more units up and a running. Um, I could go for things like Maze Burrows and stuff. I'm not worried about it right now. I do want that Guild of Mages. We need some Mercury. Let's get the Marketplace so I'll be able to buy some stuff later on. The Guild of Mages uh, is really important once you hit level 5. At level 5, you're able to get the Town Portal Scroll, which means you can teleport home once every few days. That is absolutely crucial when the enemy is coming through your gates and you're out of position and otherwise you're going to lose. Mandel's Mantle. Okay, so Mandel set means that we can get some extra resurrection basically after combat. That's not bad. We need to find a third piece of this um, set for that to trigger, but that could be kind of good. Lots of XP. I will take it. Uh, I guess I'll grab the crystal. That's fine. We're out of movement already. And I will grab the Maze Burrow so I can get some probably Minotaurs because I want some sturdier front line units that are able to protect my range units and stuff and let the shadows kind of do the rest of the work from there. Green is already out in the neutral territory. I'm not surprised. It's Decay. Decay scales up very quickly with Necromancy, so that is going to be a thing. We are possibly in some trouble here. I'd like to grab all this stuff plus some XP, so let's go fighting over here. Uh, I want to have the blind acolytes out here, actually, if we can. That's better. There we go. And we'll shadow cast and disrupt the children of Midas as much as we can. And I need one more good shadow cast. That'll do fine. Okay, good. We are taking care of them. Where did I get some of these... What are these these little blight these little blight bee things? They have death coil. Where where did they come from? I don't know where we got those. Must have been my uh, must have been my wise men making some sort of a cast. All right, we've gained some units out of this. Some slaves betrayed them. That's fine. Grab the gold. Grab the wish. Extra defense. Sure. Talk to the sphinx. All right, this is a riddle. I shave every day, but my beard remains the same. What am I? A barber. I think that worked. There we go. We got mercury and crystal and gold and stuff. Awesome. What do I want next? We said we want that Guild of Mages, but I'm actually going to take the Idol of Shadows. Once per week, I can use this to um, basically get, create a lot of shadows for my enemy and stun a bunch of them. If the enemy does attack me right now, if Green comes through and attacks, that might be my only saving grace, because the early game is easily where we are the weakest. He's actually making a beeline for my city right now. All right, well, we can't let him do that. We're probably going to have to fight him ourselves, but okay. Grab the gold. 
Uh, I can head this direction. I can definitely reach him. I won't be able to get any reinforcements, so I think we're just going to go ahead and take the fight. And I'm going to trust that we are strong enough. This is the moment of truth. We're either strong enough right now or we're not. Let's use the Idol of Shadows. So we'll use that only once this week, but that's fine. Now's a good time to do it. And let's go ahead and create some clones of, I guess, I don't know, your Banshees and a bunch of your Worms and stuff. Distract as much as we are able to. I do want to try to get some clones of these big guys, too, if we can. So we'll grab some of those. All right, I'm going to take a bunch of losses this time around. Whenever you clash with another player, you're going to take losses. This is just the way of things. But ideally, we're going to be coming out of this ahead of them in a big way. And if I can get a lot of these big guys working for me with Shadow Clones, we're going to be in good shape. Notice our cooldown seems to have reduced. We are recharging it just a little bit faster. That's great. Let's keep that going. Grab some range units and such. We don't have any other spells. So, I mean, we're not going to be able to do much else beyond this, but it's okay. The good news is we are getting a lot of early spell power because we're casting so many spells right now. This is why it's great having a lot of extra mana early on. So we're going to win this fight, I think. It's a little bit close, and I've taken a lot more losses than I would have liked. But we preserved a lot of the big stuff that I really care about, and I think we're going to be fine. I say that, actually. My range units are now in a little bit of trouble. We don't have much of a front line to defend them. But okay, if we can crush this army, though, it means that green's in a lot of trouble. Because if you can smash the enemy's snowball and destroy it, it's kind of hard for them to catch back up if you keep pressing the attack very aggressively. Well, my wise men just died, so I don't like that, but okay. Come on, they're running away. Good, all right, all right. We're gonna be, we're gonna be okay, we won this. Got a little bit hairy, took a lot of losses, but we won. That's a good sign. From here on, though, as we keep leveling up, we should only get better. So, what do we want to get for levels? Let's grab Mysticism to increase the effectiveness of my spells. We could also grab Wisdom to get more knowledge and spell power. And I think I'll do that because when you get your uh, first Tier 4 skill, you actually get two levels of it. So this is going to be, I think, two knowledge and four spell power, which is pretty good. Let's choose some spells. Uh, Air Blast, Ice Ball, Second Life, and Fire Blade. I think I'd like to take Fire Blade plus Vulnerify, Health Blade, Beam Frost, Swift Retreat. Let's go for Vulnerify, which can um, kind of weaken all of my enemies. There we go. All right. Now we go into the rebuilding stage. Head back to the city because we need to get all of our reinforcements and then we will conquer the rest of my territory. And I'm not going to lie. It is really bad that we lost as many units as we did, but we are going to be okay. Let's grab the Academy, by the way. This means we can now basically get a free level on my hero, so this is going to speed things up tremendously. So let's go for another level of Shadow Casting. The stronger this is, the more Shadow Clones I can create. Let's go ahead and kill the Neutral Hero now, because we should be able to clone almost all of his stuff, which is really going to mess with him. But also, the hero usually drops some freebies, and uh, I, I would like to have some free artifacts. Okay, we lost some Blind Acolytes. That actually hurts. I don't like losing these guys, but uh, all righty. And you were going to drop a eh, chest with some XP and stuff, plus leather gloves. Ech, that's not good enough. Oh my gosh, we're fighting dragons. Okay, wasn't expecting to actually deal with a dragon over here. Dragons can be super deadly, so if we can get some shadow clones of these guys, that's going to help me a lot. Let's keep doing that, get some of the whelps on our side. Uh, we've lost a few units here because dragons be scary. I'm not going to spend the rest of my mana because we're actually fine. Lost 16 power, killed 236. That's pretty good. Let's go for some more regeneration so I have more mana to work with. And then go ahead and claim things at the gold mine, and I'll go do the same thing for the Mercury Lab. And also the Tower of Mages. Ooh, boost for spellcasting. Notice, by the way, that we have an Echo, for example. That actually just happened three times here. You may have seen it very briefly. Echo casts such and such a spell. That's what we're looking for. And the more we level up our Echo, the more frequently that's going to happen. Hmm, I can throw away some of my units in order to boost up my character and get experience. I will happily throw away some of these small guys, right? Some of these little tiny ones to get XP plus some stats. This is still a little bit scary, but I think, honestly, with the extra shadow casting, this is going to be worthwhile. Yeah, we just took this fight over the alchemy lab and didn't take a single loss, even though I have mostly range units at this point. All right, starting to look pretty good here. Whoop! Blue has been removed from the game. Okay, so pink is on a roll. Ooh, that means we need to take down green fast because someone else is about to start scaling up in power very, very quickly. Can we shadow class a red dragon? We sure as heck can. Oh, that makes this easy. All right, it's the end of week three. Let's go ahead and break down the garrison from green that was preventing me from moving on. Um, and we should be able to enter into neutral territory. 
Green probably already has a pretty large army once again, so we need to be cautious about that, but I feel like we should be able to take them. Okay, we found purple, it's Earthen, and they are attacking me. Okay, so this player feels pretty confident about themselves. I'm gonna go ahead and use my Idol of Shadows once again to give me a slight edge. It says this battle is heavily not in my favor, and I actually could believe that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do some clones here to disrupt their front line, then we're gonna go ahead and do a blizzard to really mess with them, and then we're gonna try cloning some of their range units, which is gonna prevent them from really doing much as far as attacking me. And then I'm just gonna keep casting shadows and pretty much let the echo carry me to victory. Notice we've already got a handful of free casts over here. Let's just keep that going. Look how many shadows there are. And I've still got a bit more mana to work with, but I'm gonna wait for their next round of reinforcements, which is now. Let's go ahead and clone up some of their cavalry units, which I just saw running in here. One more clone should do it, and that's it. That's all I'm gonna do. And look how many shadows we have. Look at them! They're everywhere! I don't think we lost a single unit and we won that fight. That's how ridiculous this guy can be! Do you get it now? In fact, here comes some reinforcements. Let's go kill his other unit. Sure, why not? Didn't take a single loss. Oh my gosh. Green is running by, and honestly, if they want to go attack purple, that's fine with me. You go do that while I go take your city. Ooh, extra morale. That's always nice. Looks like Green City is completely undefended. Well, by undefended, I mean it has a lot of units in it, but it doesn't have a hero, which means this should be pretty easy. So once again, Shadow casts my way to victory. Look how many Echoes I've got here. That's like four more casts in a row, just like that. We're swarming through it. I didn't lose a single unit, again. Let's go ahead and hire one of the Decay heroes, somebody who can basically just run around and claim stuff for me. Because my main hero is going to either have to go back and pick up reinforcements or figure out where green is. Because if green's coming back, we want to be able to face them. But I'll bet you they die to purple very soon. There's green. Okay, they decided to actually come back and face me. And I got some dragons and stuff. But can I point out, I'm level 16. It's uh, getting close to the end of week 5. And thanks to the monolith, I've got 40 spell power, increasing the power of my spells by 530%. So, uh, yeah, fighting towards the end of the week, this can only be a good thing for me. Let's go ahead and knock him dead. I'm not even going to bother with my uh, Idol of Shadows. I don't think I care. Let's make sure we copy your green, uh, red dragon, though. That's going to screw with them quite a lot. Toss in some spells here and there. We're recharging our spells very quickly now, and I can just keep casting as much as I really want. And the Echo alone honestly should give me a ton of value for all of this. I mean, the game thinks that I'm still possibly losing this fight, but he's taking so many losses compared to me, I'm not even slightly worried about it. I've got four copies of Shadow Dragons right now. I mean, come on! Look at this. Look how many shadows are just careening across the map. I think he's already retreating. Is he ret He's retreating. He ran away. We got so many Echoes. I lost 90 power and took out 574. Good God. And Green's dead. That was that. So now I just need to go find purple, and I see both of their potential territories. I'm guessing green came from this direction, which means purple's primary city is probably off in this direction. Let's go take the fight to them. Shadow casting for the win! Let's go ahead and pick up shadow casting level 5 for even more value. So I'm going to echo 4, regen 3. Could go for more buffer. Sorcery up here. The reason I wanted this is mainly for the cooldown reduction. The faster I can get my shadows up and running, the more I dominate. And he's attacking me. Feeling desperate by any chance. Let's use my idol of shadows and get some of their big units. Get some range guys. Disrupt them and more copies. There we go. Echo is amazing for any sort of a summoning build. Under any circumstances, it is so good. Especially if you can do something like get Summon Horrors as a spell. Because they're some of the best units in the game, and you can have an army of like 30 of those things rolling around if you're lucky. I mean, I only cast Summon Bone Shooter I think once or twice, and I've got so many of them, it's ridiculous. I've lost one unit, and we just obliterated that entire army. So there's their city, poorly defended. Let's go grab it. Yeah, I can't even break through the walls. don't even have to. Look how many shadows are overrunning them. They're so doomed. Look how many echoes I'm getting. Look at them all. At this point, forget literally all other fights. Let's go find that last city and crush them. Oh, there they are. Hello, and they're attacking me again. See, the thing is, they look at this and they see, oh, you don't have that many units. We should be able to beat this. But it's deceptive because you don't even know I'm literally turning your own strength against you. Yep, here we go. More bone shooters, more shadows. We are starting to crash the game. That's too many units! Ah! 
and I still have 100 mana to work with. And this is one of the reasons shadow casting is great. Not only is it a very effective, good God, look at this, a very effective summoning spell, but it's cheap. It's only four mana, and it's so strong. I can get up to 203 free power using my enemy's strength. That is so good. Oh, there's their last heroes, and there's their city. All right, let's systematically pick them apart. And seriously, my army is not very big. This is a very, very small army. We should not be strong here, which is why the AI keeps attacking me. But like I said, this guy is a freaking one-man army. It's just really hard to survive in the early game. If you can do that, though, you are golden. Once again, I'm not losing any units, and we are starting to crash the game with how many shadows are swarming this area. <laughs> Look at Echo go! It's so good. Oh my gosh, look at this. Absolutely no contest. Obliterated these fools. So good. You can actually do a very similar build with the Delirium faction and the Glare spell, but that is a video for another time. In the meantime, thank you all very much for watching this very quick build guide to Heroes Hour. It's very noob friendly. You only need to know one or two spells and just follow a basic build order and survive. And even on the highest difficulty, it makes the game an absolute cakewalk. So good for for beginners, I highly recommend you give it a go. In the meantime, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe if you wouldn't mind, show your support for more videos of Heroes Hour, and I will see you guys next time.